So, hey, look, I'm, I'm looking at the clock. I want to make sure we don't run out of time here, but um, because I am coming to Warrior Protocol. It's already, it's already done. I'm, I know I'm coming. What can... Uh, well, just tell us what Warrior Protocol is for someone who might not know they need it, but then after hearing your des- description thinks, you know what, there's something I need to look into. Well, actually, I'm going to ask you a question, and, and this is really going to help to illustrate, because my view is great, but what's more important is the guys who've had some exposure to me, some kind of training through, through me. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a weird individual, dude. My background, my life has been very, very unusual compared to uh, where most guys are at. So you already, when we met, very, very squared away guy. Um, the kind of guy that, without knowing you long, I'm like, yeah, I'd take this guy to war. He, he'd carry his gear. He'd take care of business. And, and that's rare, man. So, so to me, you're already uh, at a level which is very high as far as masculinity and, and being a man. Um, but you've done some of my training. You know, you, you were playing around with um, the cold showers that I recommend. You, uh, I know that you had a really cool experience with the, uh, the hmm. Warrior World training. Uh, for anyone watching, Warrior Walk is essentially being reminded how to actually use your body and your skeleton and your muscles in a way which is natural to your physiology as a mammal and as a predator. And for man, a lot of our ability to operate effectively fundamentally is based on the platform of our physiology. So if you're if you're skinny, weak, out of shape, you will have a ceiling on how effective you can be as a man. It's just a reality. Uh, most guys, when they walk, their, their, their bones are out of place. They don't use the muscles in their ankles or their legs properly. Uh, most guys can't sit up. Most guys' necks are out of position. Most guys don't know how to use their ears or their eyes or their sense of smell. There's all kinds of things. Um, but why don't you, Charlie, tell me about kind of a couple of things that you did through my training, my very basic training, and what did you get out of it and what changed? So uh, I remember the first one, well, and this goes back a few months ago, but the first one was just going for a walk and being deliberate and intentional with connection to earth. Uh, you know, and again, I think it was that piece about being deliberate and intentional. Where are you? How are you postured? I can't say I've got it done perfectly, but just taking the time to think about it made a huge difference. And as like I shared with you, we were walking in, we were, I had been listening to your trainings for a couple of days prior to having a big meeting. Uh, and this was towards the end of the year and we were actually going into this meeting and I, my plan was is that uh, this client they've kind of been dragging her feet and they've been you know jacking us around um, we're gonna end up firing them um, that was my intent and, and I, I knew there was gonna be some uh, some challenge between me and one specific individual but uh, again I'm, I'm walking in uh, from my ankles to the top of my head, I'm, I'm solid, I've got it figured out, I'm, I'm dialed in, I'm focused. Not only did we end up keeping the client, but I think we upsold them by almost 300% to something completely different. And I don't say that out of greed, but it was just that my confidence was different. The way that I was assessing the, the, the field was different. I knew what they had done in the past, but I knew what they needed to do going forward. And in that meeting, we were able to clearly articulate and listen to what they were doing and then we were able to clearly articulate back to them why they didn't get the results they wanted and here's the plan for success and the cool thing was when we presented it without a proposal without having done research and due diligence without any of that stuff uh they basically said yes and stroked a check right there on the spot and that was a very eye-opening experience for me the uh the cold shower training the micro stressor training um you know, it's funny. It's, it's, it's just funny how something as simple as that, you take it for granted and think that it's no big deal. But I challenge you, you know, most, most people, men in, uh, in specific, go jump in your shower at 50 degrees, 60 degrees. It is uncomfortable. You don't want to sit there. You'd rather have a hot shower. You want to get out. Uh, but there's an analogy like that cold shower is like any other stress that's coming down the pike. Why wouldn't you train yourself for it so that you can still operate efficiently and effectively in that moment and i think it did lend itself and translate itself into other scenarios where you know you might have been caught up in the moment in the excitement and been so pinpoint that you actually lost your peripheral which is is detrimental in some ways but because i sat there in the shower for three four months uh taking the the last two to five minutes was able to increase uh tremendously Uh, And I still practice that. I need to get back to taking the cold showers, but I've done the plunge pools. I've done this. I've done that. I'm going to be buying a micro stressor mat pretty soon. Yeah, cool. Uh, So, uh, I mean, that to me was uh, 
what I imagine to be just a fraction of the overall, but it was being intentional and deliberate with training myself, conditioning myself for moments such as that, that you can't always anticipate, but you know they're coming. I love it, brother. You know, I, you're reminding me of uh, last weekend, weekend before I was down in uh, Havasupai Falls, which is down in the Grand Canyon. It's the most remote uh, village in the U.S. The only access is helicopter, mule, or a 10-mile hike. So I actually went down there with Ryan Dewey, one of my really uh, phenomenal war protocol clients, and he's done the hike six times. And this time, uh, we did the hike with no brakes, uh, far faster than he's done it before. And it's funny what people pick up from this kind of training, uh, but halfway through, I was talking about how this hike seemed a lot easier than others, and he didn't need any rest. And he goes, yeah, one of the things I picked up from war protocol is I can do anything for 10 miles. I can do anything for an hour. I can do anything for 24 hours. I had a client who ran 100 miles. He's like, I can do anything for 100 miles. Um, it's, it's knowing and having that deep inbuilt confidence that yeah. whatever discomfort comes at you, um, it's going to end. Everything passes. And just breathe and exist and be in the moment and just get through it. So it's unfortunately something which is uh, pretty rare and lacking. But, but I love that you got that out of that. That's, uh, that's supremely powerful. 